Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Sentinel Stories. I have another special guest, Miss Foudy. Did I pronounce your name right? Yep, Foudy. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell me, um, what's your role at Spanaway Lake and how long you've been here with us? I've been here for one trimester. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'm all <laughs> through it. Um, and I am an ELA teacher. Okay. And I teach 10 and 12 right now. Co-taught. Okay. Co-taught 10th and 12th grade. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's a little, that's an interesting dynamic because they're still kind of new and then they're about to kind of go off and explore um, maybe future writers and ELA teachers that you you have in your classes. So that's fun. That's yeah, fun. I, I like having um, many grades. At my previous school, I was eight through 12. Wow. So, yeah, a lot. Um, but I like seeing growth yeah you know it it reminds me that we all are on our journeys and it takes years to go on our journeys 100 percent um but I love that 12th graders have different requirements and different attitudes and different needs and I get to be a different person with them but I also love my younger grades as well because um, we get to have serious talks but we get to also be silly as well. So I, I love having everybody. The spectrum, I love that. So what have been some highlights for you so far this year then? Um, what I love about schools are people, not necessarily the curriculum, but the relationships that you get to have and to form and to grow from. So I really loved getting to know the ELA team here. There are some fantastic people. Yes. Um, so I've loved making some new friends and administration has been really supportive. They are constantly putting up with my emails and questions. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. And then um, as our trimester has gone on, I feel like I've gotten a much better relationship with my classes as well. Mm -hmm. So I get to know different people. They have different lives for me, different contexts, different obstacles, different successes. So I just, I love my students and getting to know them. And then I get to know so many of the adults here as well. I, I appreciate that so much that you just shared that because, you know, that's one of my um, kind of my mission visions is like community schools, you know, <laughs> like how involved we get, how connected we get, you know, it all translates to, I feel, academic performance and attendance and all of those things that, you know, when you sit through trainings and we're looking at data and all of that, and it's like the how, the how, um, and we talk about relationships, but I think more of what I heard you say is their stories, like learning who they are mm -hmm. um, and kind of, I think that naturally things surface as to like what needs they have that you could kind of help fulfill. And I know that you've reached out to me as a social worker a couple of times to support kids. And I celebrate that. I, I love that as a new, um, a new educator in the community, you're just like on a mission to, to serve academically, but also like social, emotional and all of that. So yay. Yep academics don't mean too much if they aren't relevant and yeah. it's not coming from a place of love and a place of, place of joy mm -hmm. so I don't think you can instantaneously make those relationships so you do have to allow for that time and that trust to form yeah and that's what the past couple weeks have been is seeing some of those fruits of our labor not just theirs and not just mine but together as ours group. yes I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so tell me what high school did you go to? What, like, what were some valuable lessons that you learned from your high school experiences, whether good or bad? Like, what are some takeaways that you kind of have in the forefront of your mind to this day? Well, I went to Lakeview High School in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. It's okay. about 20 minutes north of Detroit, Michigan. So we're right on the water. Mm. And um, I've been stewing on this question a lot. 
And I think a big thing for high school for me is that um, I've flourished more since then. I think as a high schooler, I know as a high schooler, I was quite combative and argumentative and judgmental um, because I felt insecure. I had to be right. I had to get the perfect grades. Um, I had to be the best at everything. And if I felt threatened, you know, that came out as quite combative. Right. Um, but I had a ton of teachers that I should tell me that I should be a teacher. Yes. <laughs> For my whole life, I've been told to be a teacher. Um, and I just remember in high school, like I had some really great times, but I also remember being very, very low, being insecure and being and feeling super isolated and that no one understood me and I had no friends. Mm -hmm. But then also I had these almost manic or ecstatic moments as well. And I remember in college feeling a bit more evened out, yeah, a bit more understood, a bit more confident in myself. Um, so kind of looking back at my life, yeah, high school, I, I had fun in high school. I was on the soccer team. I love soccer. I still play soccer. Oh. Um, it's a sport that's around the world. So everywhere yes. I've to play soccer. Yes. Football. I mean, let's keep it real. Yeah. Yeah. I've had to adjust <laughs> a couple of times. Um, and I had some really great teachers and I'm still in contact with some of my friends from high school, but the post high school life has been really good for me. Right. And I, I just needed some more time to kind of marinate. Yeah. Figure myself out. It's, you were, do you feel that it was because you were, you were more involved in the, dis, the decision-making of your academic path? I think that's a big part. Um, I went to Michigan State University, a very big college, mm -hmm. and I got to find my niche, like the people who I just really clicked with. Yeah. Um, and I had some funky ideas, like some funky things that I wanted to study and to investigate. And I found people who were like me and who thought like me. And that ability to make choices about what I study, where I live, who I associate with, and then even after college, like moving countries and then finding your niche in there. Right. So that that power of choice is really important for me. And I think in high school, I wasn't quite adept at making good choices yet or understanding. Like how they could really impact you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just needed some more time, I think. Yeah. I like that more time to like marinate on things that's what you said to marinate I like that um so I'm gonna jump into some other fun questions some yeah. fun some serious but just relevant to kind of you know who you are and I know um from listening to staff and students and families that I've listened to Sentinel stories um they've all connected with staff in so many different ways based on some of your responses. So um, here we go. I do best in school when? Um, I'm getting my master's right now. So this Yay! Is very relevant. I have to chunk and I have to back oh. plan. Okay. Um, I have historically been a pro procrastinator and I'm trying to combat that. Yeah. I do not have time to procrastinate in my life right now. <laughs> um, but now on Sundays, I look at my module that my professor opens and I write down my due dates. I write down my steps. And I don't need to write exactly which day I do things, but in my head, I know the order of things that I need to do. Right. I roughly plan which day I need to do them. So I have to backwards plan, I have to chunk. Right. That's, that's a good strategy. I use that as a similar strategy when it's like a massive mm -hmm. undertaking that I have. Backwards planning has, yeah, saved me so much. Mm -hmm. um, an animal you are most like is? I am a cat. You're a cat? Yes. All I, right. A little bit grumpy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am very tired. I sleep a ton. Um, I take a lot of naps and I, it's, I've always been like this my whole life. It's right. not necessarily um, 
a time of the year kind of thing. Right. I'm an, I'm a napper. And, but at the same time, I think I'm also very cuddly and very snuggly and loving, <laughs> um, but I'm a bit mercurial, meaning that like, I can kind of switch back and forth between my moods. Okay. Like, quite mercurial as well. Nice. Um, I use good judgment when. Mm. So for me, my good judgment is listening to my gut and my instinct. Um, but I think I have to be careful about not immediately reacting. Mm -hmm. So listening to kind of what my inside and what my heart is telling me, but I found growing up, growing out of my judgmentalness, um, taking time to listen to others is really important for me to kind of understand where my gut reaction is coming from. Mm -hmm. Because it could be that I do actually need to adjust my gut reaction and I need to adjust that instinct. Um, but if I listen to people who I trust and who see the world differently from me yeah, and then kind of reassess and take that action, that's usually my best judgment. Okay. I am interested in... So I love reading. That's why I'm an English teacher. <laughs> um, but my, my master's class right now is children's and young adult literature. Ooh. And the syllabus reading has been freaking awesome. I've loved it. So I brought a lot of the books that I'm interested in right now. And a lot of them are about moving away from canonical voices like white voices mm -hmm. and like heteronormative voices so um look I'm, I'm grabbing my pen right now so I yeah. can like do a little less okay go the and poet then, x yes read that we did right. a book club at the school yep I kids am. so good I I don't like verse books. So I was really sad that I had to read a verse book. And then by the end of it, you were just like, oh, oh it's okay. It, oh my God. Amazing. And I watched a bunch of her Ted talks, mm -hmm. love with them. So, uh, won me over. As yes. And then I've gotten, we just came out of, um, another poetry week where we got to read a lot of indigenous books. Okay. So When the Rain Sings, poems by young Native Americans. And this is one where the American Indian Smithsonian Institution sent pictures of objects to Native American schools all around the US. And students wrote poems in response to those objects. Oh my God. So you get pictures. That's gorgeous. Just um, love that. But also I got to learn so much more about all the different nations because they have like little informational packets or informational blurbs in here too. Right. Um, learning more about foods and culture. So a lot of things that my school didn't teach me, I'm learning about now. I'll send you a slide that has all of the, the nations represented in Washington state. So you have- Yeah, I saved an insert because I get the newspaper. Okay. And I saved an insert, but it didn't cover too much. Um, I, I've got, book. I've got you covered. I'll send that to you. Um, this was a big one for me, 13 moons on turtle back, on turtle back, where you learn about um, the different ways that different nations split up our year. So instead of learning that, you know, January, February, March, you right. about the different moons and why those moons came to be. Okay, what was that one? 13 moons. Um, you know what? What we're going to do is I'm going to get the list because I'm loving these titles and I want to make sure everybody that watches like our interview gets the list. So we're going to have, we'll have a little slide at the end that covers it, but keep going because I love I'm, the 13 moons. The 13 <laughs> moons is like beautiful as well. This one called Between Earth and Sky. Mm -hmm. There, I did not know this, but there are six directions in many indigenous cultures. So north, south, east, west. Yeah. Then above, below. Oh, and then the seventh one, excuse me, there are seven, is the one inside. So this okay. one was a good grounding one for me between okay. earth and sky. Yes. Um, and just learning so much about things that I never knew about, but have been part of our land for 
time immemorial. So good education for me. Yes, definitely. I've got Jerome by heart. So cute. Yo soy Muslim. Oh, yeah. It's about, it's a, it's a letter from a father to his daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about her being Muslim in a Spanish speaking culture. I, yeah. Okay. I need that one too. Uh, this one is a bilingual book. When we love someone, we sing to them. It's about a father helping his son write a song for a boy he loves. Gosh. And My now, son's going to be like, mom, new books. I'm going to be like, yes, they're for you. <laughs> and then I got to read A Girl in Pieces, El Defo. This one was a graphic novel about um, a woman who is partially deaf. Mm -hmm. um, and so it tells her what it's like to be hearing impaired and the struggle she went through in the 1970s. But it's a graphic novel, so kind of a different medium. Yeah, definitely. And then this is the one I'm reading right now called Something Rotten, A Fresh Look at Roadkill what okay and talking about how roadkill um has advanced science it's nonfiction. okay we'll have to talk more about this later i'm intrigued by all of them but then you like i feel like you left the final one yes <laughs> for more discussion after our interview for sure i'm intrigued by that <laughs> um so when i am sad i Mm. When I am in a healthy sad, it's, or like a self-aware sad, I know that I need to remove myself. I got to go somewhere and it can be, you know, I can go outside, go for a run, go exercise, or just like physically removing me from the room where that sadness kind of is. Mm -hmm. Um, because I just need, if I sit in my sadness, it will continue to get me. Yeah. Um, and I won't be able to like heal and move on from it. If I am unhealthy, sad, then I get grumpy mm -hmm. and I get, I get almost angry when I'm sad. Yeah. Very much like, well, doesn't matter. doesn't make a difference in the world anyways. It's a very important distinct distinction that I haven't heard many people make, um, especially when we're working with teenagers and we see that some of them are angry, mm -hmm. but there's so many underlying layers and it could be sadness. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's okay to be sad. We're not always in this like euphoric state of happiness. That's right. not how the world works, but um, knowing when my sadness is getting a bit out of control or when my sadness is making decisions for me, right. that's when I know I got to take some steps to understand more of where it's coming from and, and start to grow and move on from it. Right. And for our youth, like understanding where it's coming from and kind of growing and learning from it, but then also knowing, man, I need help. Mm -hmm. I need to like talk to somebody yeah. and asking for help from caregivers or mm -hmm. staff that they engage with like anybody but knowing what they can manage versus mm -hmm. what they need support and that's a distinction that I think even we as adults figure out where that line is yes. think, you know I th honestly I feel like kids don't think that we seek out services and support for our mental health, but um, just like hiring a personal trainer occasionally, those are the things that we do to kind of keep like mind, body, spirit, like all of those things yes. kind of aligned. Yeah. That's been a big journey for me is asking for help. Yeah. Because I'm supposed to do everything right and on my own, but that's not how that works. <laughs> so that what can I do? When do I need to take those steps versus like, it's too much. I need some help right now. Mm -hmm. Weakness because connection with another human isn't weakness, you know? Right. Yeah, totally agree. 
I control my anger by. Um, this is another one where I, I need to step away because if I, again, if I just sit and marinate on it and ruminate on it, I'm just going to get more and more angry. Um, so if like work is making me angry, then I need to stop working or I need to move away from the thing that's making me angry mm -hmm. and then cycle back to it. Okay. Um, recognizing that I'm feeling angry is a big step and mm -hmm. then saying, oh, it's this thing that's making me angry. I'm going to go somewhere else, think about something and kind of let the dust settle. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important for me is because when I'm in a state, I'm in a state, but sometimes that can get out of control. So yeah. I can move away and let things settle down and then come back. You, a strategy for you is it's as if you're leaving the sadness and leave, leaving the anger in that space in that room as like an energy and you're like I'll deal with you later yeah. I'm gonna go go ahead and take a break I'll address you yes. but I just can't do it right now because so it may be that healthy decision that I'm making if I'm reacting yeah. in that moment right yeah um let's see I am creative when um for the longest time, I never considered myself creative because I have never taken an art class. I don't draw, I don't paint, like kind of a stereotypical representation of crea creativity. Right, very stereotypical. Don't do that. And, but I've played um, some musical instruments mm. in my life and um, I'm really crafty, so mm -hmm. I like building things. I love Legos. Right. Legos are like my, one of my number one Christmas gifts. And they're actually a great way for me to help process some of my emotions. When my grandpa passed away, I got the phone call. I was living in Saudi Arabia and I got it at like six o'clock in the morning. I called my boss. And I was like, listen, I can't make it to work today. And then I built a Lego set and it was a good way to process. Yeah. Um, so building things, creating things. Um, I like, I really like building shelves, like buying wood and varnishing it and then building shelves. It brings me a lot of joy. Like, do I need to remodel a room? For <laughs> no. I'm working on it right now. I'm building oh. shelves. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, you, you, you already have a job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the other thing that I think I'm really creative with is um, building curriculum. Mm -hmm. I really have found um, a lot of joy and a lot of empowerment in creating flexible, responsive, empowering, student-centered curriculum. Mm -hmm. and I found that I can be quite creative with how we craft units of inquiry and how we can hit multiple things at the same time. Because in our current um, curriculum construction, we have so many things we have to do. And I'm pretty yeah. good about aligning things and hitting multiple things in one go. Love that. Love that. You are, you are super, super creative, <laughs> super, but you had, you had to realize your definition of creativity was like this small kind of box that yeah. you were like, nope, don't fit into that box. But I mean, people write, um, I mean, there are just so many, I have a student who loves to polish rocks and just make these beautiful pieces that they like find and they have a polisher and it just is so pretty. I just, mm -hmm. I love to see the different things, the different things that they do for mm -hmm. sure. It's almost like creativity is an expertise combined with something that gives you joy. Mm -hmm. Like it's not necessarily the output per se, but I think it's a lot of the, the feelings that go along with it to me Definitely. is what creativity is. Yeah. Um, others say that I am. Mm. Usually intelligent and feminist are the first two adjectives I hear about myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, I'm trying to think about what colleagues have said about me. I think that um, dedication to work 
because I'm pretty intense about my work and being prepared for my work and, and doing the best by myself and the best by good research practices and the best by my students. Mm -hmm. um, community driven. I'll just give you one from me. Driven. <laughs> community uh, driven. I am organized, but not neat, if that's possible. That can definitely be possible. I'm, I'm creating a visual in my brain, but yes, that, that can be possible because from like what you said about how you organize, like you're organizing your masters and you get a module and you do backwards planning. Mm -hmm. And so I think just kind of mapping things out intellectually, mm -hmm. I think that is definitely organization. Um, I can do something very similar, but if you looked in the space that I work in right now, I'm glad that the video is just this small <laughs> yeah. thing because people would not think that I'm organized. Yeah. But if my colleagues engaged with me and knew my work and they know my history, like they would say, you're very organized. And yeah. then look at my space and be like, hmm. so I get, that. I mean, is that kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my room isn't necessarily clean, but there's definitely a place for everything. Yes. I can tell you that. And there's a yes. system. <laughs> there is a system. Yes. <laughs> okay. There's somebody, I feel, I feel closer to you already. <laughs> um, one way I show caring. Mm. Um, uh, acts of kindness is one of my love languages and gifts are a big one for me. So um, my mom taught me to be writing letters. She writes me a letter every single week. Mom. I know. Oh so, so there's that layer. Yeah. So I, I send out postcards um, every place that my fiance and I go. We send out 14 to 15 postcards. Um, I also write letters, like sending care packages, little gifts. I like baking. So I often give away my sugary treats because I shouldn't be eating that many. <laughs> Um, but acts of kindness and gifts are usually how I care. And if I spend my time on you. Yeah. I'm very selective about where my time goes. So if I'm dedicating time to you, like that's, I care a lot about you. Yes. Oh my God. I feel the time one. I feel so much like as a single mom and mm -hmm. just having various responsibilities, um, for caring for, um, you know, a parent who's facing some medical challenges. Um, so when I, when I do give up time and I engage with like friends or somebody outside of work, you know, I think they, they really do have this idea of like, okay, I am fully present for this moment with you. And I'm so glad that we got to be together. Cause I think they realize that, um, I mean, my time is valuable and I know that sounds really cheesy, but in the same sense, I try to like, we need to have self-care. So it's like time that I need to take care of my family, time I need to take care of myself. But then yes, love language, like caring for others and like showing those pieces, like my time is like one of those things to be like, I care for you so deeply. Yeah. I want to share this time with you, even though you know that I have like a thousand other things, yeah. but being with you is really important you know, to mm -hmm. me and for us and all of that. And similarly, if someone spends that time with me, mm -hmm. I've learned so much more about appreciating, like they have 10,000 things that they need to do. They need to have their self-soothing or their self-care. Yeah. So they are actually making that choice for me as well. And that makes that time even more special. Oh, yes. That we're both making that choice together. I, yeah, definitely. Um, do you have any closing thoughts? Thank you. It's, uh, it's great to, to talk with someone um, and for us to both choose to take this time together. Mm -hmm. It means a lot that, um, especially as a new person, that someone's taking some time to get to know me outside of kind of immediate concerns, you know, what's my phone number? That was a big question. <laughs> You're, um, you know, how do I log into this thing? Like a lot of the questions and a lot of the conversations we have are like getting me to, to survive and work. 
Yeah. Not necessarily like, who are you, Miss Foudy, as a human? Yes. And like really listening to me. So I feel very validated and very appreciated that someone is choosing to talk to me as like a human instead of a worker. I listen, this is this is a gift that you're giving to me. Um, I like people's stories are so important to the work that I do as a school social worker, but as a community, like if we don't know each other's stories and how we can kind of work to support each other to kind of elevate our community to another level. Like I just feel there's so much power in our words and our kind of our engagement and exchanges that we have. So I appreciate you for taking this time to kind of hang out with me. And um, I am like, oh my gosh, now I just have goosebumps. I just am like projecting out so many years ahead of you being at Spanaway Lake. <laughs> Like, I don't want you going anywhere now. Um, oh my gosh. What would we do without you? And we've only had you for a trimester. How, <laughs> how powerful is that? Like now I'm just like, okay, what, what do we need to do to keep her here? Mm -hmm. That's, that's my mission in life now. <laughs> that's great. I love, being, and I love being here. It's definitely tough times and things would be a lot different, but I feel like because of these adversities, we get to grow together from yeah. them. So when we come out on that other side, it will be such a deep and meaningful relationship. It will. That unites us together to move forward and to be introspective as a community. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Miss Foudy. And I definitely look forward to the book list. I'll send it. <laughs> and chatting with you again sometime yeah. soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Bye. <laughs> Here's Miss Fowdy's book list. If interested, contact our school library. Or if we don't have it, contact the Pierce County Library System.